Hey guys, Smith here from Minute Maintenance coming at you. Since I'm out here living my best country life and I got my dog sleeping in the background, we're going to come at you with a little bit of a different video today. Today, we're going to be doing maintenance on this tr lawn mowing tractor. See if we can get this thing in much better condition. Stick with me. Got to get some maintenance done. All right, guys, before me, you have my brand new lawn mowing tractor. Now, I picked this up on Facebook Marketplace for $200. So it's a $200 riding lawnmower. You know, what can you expect? Well, when I first picked it up here about a week ago, I knew it needed a battery. So I went ahead and bought a new battery for it. And just by doing that, I was able to get it going enough where I was able to test drive it and figure out exactly what's going on. Um, I was able to cut a little bit of grass before it died on me. The carburetor needs to be cleaned out clearly. The oil is probably from the 1980s. And it probably use a new spark plug and air filters so we're going to give this thing a basic tune-up now a riding lawnmower really isn't much different than a regular lawnmower and a, reg and a car engine isn't much different than a lawnmower engine it's all basically simple and runs on the same common principles of fuel air and spark to be able to function to be able to run and to be able to to operate as best so what we're going to do is we're going to change the oil we're going to pull the carburetor off and clean that sucker out because i bet that's never been done put on a new air filter new spark plug and see if we can get this thing working at its best again Stick with me. Let's get after it. Guys, first thing we're going to do is the hood just hinges itself up like this. And we're going to come over here, and this is our breather box. So let's go ahead and loosen this breather box cover off and see what we got underneath here. There's our air filter. Oh gosh, look how brown and dirty and gross that is. Come check out the new air filter, guys. I picked up this kit. Look at that. Look at the difference in that. I picked up this kit, which came with air filter, fuel filter, oil filter, and two spark plugs, specifically for this lawnmower. I picked that up off of Amazon for about 25 bucks, so this is gonna be a fairly inexpensive tune-up job. Undo that wing nut, and this cap can go into the garbage. I'm gonna go ahead and put this wing nut back just so I don't lose it for right now because I don't wanna put the new air filter on because what I want to get to, first and foremost, is that guy down there, the carburetor. This is your fuel line, comes in off your gas tank, comes down here and connects right there. I want to get that guy off so we can give it a good cleaning. And looks like I'm going to have to pull these two bolts off. And I should have access to my carburetor. All right, to get these two bolts off down here underneath the breather box, it's just two 10 millimeter bolts. And I know what you guys are thinking, hey guys, how can we not work on the cars right now? Well, if you watched my previous video, I'd mentioned how people, due to the state of the economy, inflation, gas prices, people are canceling projects left and right. Stuff they want done to the cars are willing just to live with for right now until this economy is back to normal because people don't have money to spend. And so I got to work on whatever I can work on just to keep myself from going insane. And unfortunately, you guys are stuck coming along for the ride on that one because you guys are the people I like to talk to. So, lucky you, right? All right, so this thing should just slide back. And we'll go ahead and set that off to the side. And now we have our cheap, janky, filthy carburetor. I'm gonna go ahead and look this thing over and figure out exactly how to pull that off so we can get a good cleaning, and I'll come back to you. All right, guys, this is real tricky, so pay close attention. So the way you get this carburetor off, okay, once you get the breather box off from those two bolts, two 10 millimeter bolts, the way you get the carburetor off. Here we go, guys, you ready? You just pull it. <laughs> it's just, those two bolts also help retain the carburetor in place, pushed up back there against the housing. But look at all this junk that's back here, guys. Oh, my goodness. Look at all that. That's not good, that floating around the carburetor. That's going to get sucked in at some point. Look how filthy and crummy and dirty this is. Let's just go ahead and shim this guy off we're gonna undo the choke and the throttle control cables here let's take a peek at those those just tend to be well actually all right guys to get these cables off they tend to just well they just stick in and then have a hook to them so you kind of just want to work your angles um just move the carburetor around a little bit just be a little bit ginger you can bend this just a, a little bit i mean i don't want to say bend you can flex this just a little bit just to get it out but then remember which one goes to the front and back the lighter one goes to the back the dark one goes to the front it's going to take two hands but i'm just going to manipulate the position of this and get those disconnected all right now that we've got those disconnected what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my pliers so i'm going to take this guy just set it get that out of the way I'm gonna set them back here on the bar, like that. I'm gonna get my pliers, undo this clamp, and there's still active fuel in this hose, and there's no actual fuel cutoff. So what I'm gonna do is get a pair of vice grips as well to try to pinch this line off. 
So I can try to move this clamp out, just set this off to the side. You're going to lose a little bit of fuel, but you just don't want the whole thing pouring out. That way we can get it disconnected and we can get the bowl, which is the bottom part, cleaned off and get everything looking nice and new again. All right, guys, and there you go. I went ahead and took my pliers and I moved the clamp out of the way and the hose lost a little bit of fuel, but not too much. And as you look back here, you see my vice grips further up the line because I want to get this fuel filter removed too. So I figured instead of having to clamp it twice, I went back here further on the line. I used this rag here, guys, because I didn't want my teeth actually cutting into the rubber hose. Then I have to replace the fuel line. Now, if you're doing this on any vehicle, and you want to stop the flow of the fuel and you look at the fuel line and it's old and it's brittle and it's cracked well you might want to replace that anyway because when you go to try to pinch it off it's probably going to fall apart on you then you're in a bad spot so let's go ahead and keep that in mind so now that i got this disconnected here i can go ahead and take my carburetor let's give her a good looking over she's definitely going to need cleaned let's figure out how do we get this bowl off hmm interesting design they have here all right, guys, it looks like the bowl is actually just held in from the bottom. Now, some carburetors have a screw on either side of the bowl itself, but the bowl is actually just held in on the bottom down here by a nut. And what I need is a 13 millimeter wrench, and I can start loosening that cat up. Now, when I do this, all the gas that's left in the bowl is going to pour out, so it's good to have your oil pan already ready to go. So, we can do your oil change anyway. And let the gas drop down in there and go ahead. And we'll get this guy removed. All right, guys, and this is the fancy, some sort of solenoid related mixed in part that was screwing in the bottom of the bowl. We'll go ahead and hit that and get that cleaned off as well. Some carb cleaner. And this is the bowl. So the bowl sits on the bottom of the carburetor. Boop, boop. Comes out and look at all that, guys. Look at all that contaminant that's in there. That should not be in there. This thing has not been cleaned for a long time, so. If ever. What we're going to do is get everything cleaned up, cleaned off, spray down some carb cleaner from this part. And what we have underneath here on this carburetor, on the bottom, this is called your, your float because, well, it floats. And it's only held in with this push pin in the back. So be very careful. Whenever you're taking any parts apart, be very careful. Look around. Make sure you understand what goes where and how. You don't want this pin to actually fall off in the back. And then you put the float on upside down or you lose the pin, you can't put it back together. That would make for a, a real bad day. And I looks like I got one wire left back there. Probably a ground of some sort. We'll go ahead and get that disconnected. And then we'll take this over to our work. We'll take this over and get it cleaned off. And check that out, guys. Looks brand new compared to how it was before. And look at inside the bowl. Much cleaner. Much cleaner. All right, all I did was take some carb cleaner, guys. Not brake cleaner, not soap and water. Took some carb cleaner and a rag, okay? and a rag, and I sprayed it down. All right, I let the jet stream from the carburetor do most of the force. Then I use the rag to gently wipe it off because you don't want to cause any damage to any of these parts, okay? Keep in mind, these if you're gonna try to reuse these old gaskets and seals, look them over, make sure there's, that they're actually usable, but if you can replace these carburetor seals, that's great because the last thing you want is a vacuum leak going on because you're gonna have more issues. And it's also important to clean around the housing as well, and I'll go through and do a little bit better job of clean around the housing as well because the last thing you want to do is put a clean carburetor back onto a dirty area just to get dirty again. Um, yeah, guys, be mindful, be gentle, all right? Just clean it off because it's gonna breathe much better now. It's not gonna have all that gunk sitting around causing any issues. So we're gonna get the bowl and everything reassembled and then we're gonna work on getting this shroud off so we can get to the spark plugs. But the carburetor is done. Part of our maintenance on this today is we're gonna go ahead and we are going to drain the oil as well. So while I'm working, on, gonna work on getting the shroud off, which appears to be eight millimeter bolts around the outside, I'm gonna go ahead and let the oil start draining. So I have my pan underneath, the same pan I was using to catch whatever excess fuel was going to come out. It has this nifty little drain plug here where you just pop the cap and then you give it a twist and a pull and she's gonna come start pouring out. Now it's not exactly through that hole and I can't get my oil pan all the way underneath but it seems to be doing a good job catching everything. And I'll go ahead, since my rag is already dirty anyway, I'll use this in the end to clean it up, get the rest down there. But we'll let that drain while we work on getting the rest of this shroud off so we can get to the spark plugs. Hey guys, best thing about this channel is you'll see all the mistakes along with everything else that we got going on. Um, so it turns out I didn't need to remove that shroud at all. Okay, so it was one, two, three eight millimeter bolts, and then there was a ten millimeter, bo millimeter bolt holding in the dipstick tube here, ten millimeter bolt here, and the one in the very front right there. And then I was able to remove the whole shroud. Now I'm glad I did remove the shroud because check this out, guys. I was noticing you know what that is. Those are rat droppings. Come over here, check this out. You see all that fluff down there? 
rats were making a nest in here. So we're gonna go ahead and get our shop back and clean up all that garbage, um, because that shouldn't be in your engine. But rats will do that when things sit for a long time. No wonder this thing was $200 and running like crap. Good thing we're here cleaning it out. The spark plug actually is located right down here. Here's my spark plug wire. Be careful getting this out, being this thing is set for a long time. These wires tend to get brittle and you can actually pull the top of the wire here out of the boot. So what I always like to do just to be safe when I know it's been sitting for a while, it hasn't changed for a while, I'll, I'll take a pair of pliers. I took a small pair of needle nose pliers, the same ones I used for the, here they are. Same one I used to remove the clamp on the fuel hose and I reached in and grabbed a hold of the boot itself. and was able to apply pressure to pull it off and now let's work on getting that spark plug out. This is your standard 5A spark plug socket. I have to put an extension on it, just given the amount of room I have to work with. I'll go ahead and loosen this cat up and get this guy out of there. Your guys, spark plug is pulled out and swapped out. Now I'm going to clean up all that rat nest garbage. And one of my favorite tools, one of the more, more expensive and fancy tools I have, because I like to keep things basic, guys. Like I said, this isn't a professional shop. I just know how to get things done. And I understand people out there, they buy the cheapest tools as well. Things are expensive in the world. If you're not working on cars professionally, why, do you, why go out and, and buy the most expensive tool there is when a $20 set from Harbor Freight will get you where you need to be 80% of the time. One of the more expensive things in my shop is this Milwaukee battery-operated shop vac. It's awesome. It's portable. It's lightweight. It's great for cleaning out cars. It's great for cleaning out stuff like this. Everything is self-contained. You have these clips, one on each side that opens up the whole top motor and everything comes off and then you just dump out all the debris that's underneath here. And your hoses and everything and your battery contained all in here and it's the same battery you use for like an impact wrench hoses are contained along with the attachments this thing's awesome so let's go ahead turn around and let's vacuum up all that rat garbage All right, now I got the shroud bolted back down. Next thing we're gonna do is remove this old fuel filter right here, which is held on with the hose clamp, hose clamp. Just take a pair of pliers, peel those off, and pull it out, and put in the new fuel filter, which is obviously a lot hardier. So ho hopefully it'll do a much better job filtering out any garbage that might be left in the tank from uh, other previous issues. Now, when you're putting the fuel filter on, be sure to check for directionality. Let's come over here. There's always an arrow somewhere. You can see right here where my thumb is. There's an arrow pointing. That's the flow, so gas comes in this way comes out this way towards the carburetor all right new fuel filter is in place now let's reinstall the carburetor make sure you have your new or old gaskets still in place go ahead and shimmy her back on there right over those two bolts reattach our ground make sure we reattach our wire here bada bing bada boom those just push into each other the way you disconnect that is just pull it off and push it in. A lot of lawnmowers aren't going to have this particular added feature. I, I assume some sort of safety feature. Um, I don't know. But we'll reattach it because when everything go back, exactly the same it was. All right. And I went ahead and reattached my bars here for my choke and my throttle. And as you can see, it's very important to remember which way you put them in because I put them on backwards. I'm going to pull those off and do it again. All right, guys. Now that we went ahead and put those choke and throttle cable bars back in the right spot. Let's go ahead and reapply our fuel line. Pushes right on. We'll get our pliers. And we'll slide, pinch, and slide that clamp up into place. A little more than that. There we go. That's good. And now let's reinstall the air filter breather box thingamajigga. Right there, and then it is just two bolts. We're almost done, guys. Almost it took about four quarts of oil. Now, moment of truth. Let's see if she's gonna run any better than she was before. She was chugging, she was misfiring. Pop, pop, pop. Let's see if we can get any better. There you go guys, she's running a lot better now. I just went ahead and I cut all this grass here, several inches long. Didn't bog down once, didn't stall on me once. Same principle for 
Riding lawn mowers applies to regular lawn mowers, applies to boats, applies to airplanes, to trucks, tanks, everything. You gotta make sure everything's nice and clean. Clean your carburetor out. You saw how filthy and dirty that was. Clean out any bird's nests, rat's nests that might be building up in there. And then change your oil, any spark plug, your air filter. Let her breathe happy, fire happy, and she'll be a good running machine. I spent 200 bucks on this. I got several acres I have to mow now that I'm a, I'm a country boy, and so I wanna make sure this is gonna last me a long time. My $200 investment is gonna be worth it. Um, at some point, I'll upgrade to a much better, fun, maybe radio having tractor but for right now this one's uh this one seems to be doing the job for me so i hope you guys like the video any comments or questions please drop those below like subscribe and as always guys take a minute out of your own day do some maintenance we'll catch you next time